you don't choose farming, farming chooses you. My father was doing it, and from a young age, I knew that this was what I wanted to do. You know, it's what I was born to do. On this blazing hot day in June, Chip Mace leads the way behind the wheel, while his son Carvel enjoys the steady ride as he plants his favorite fruit. Right now we grow about 10 acres of watermelons, all different kinds. Here at Foxleaf Farm in Tawnytown, the father and son duo manage over 100 acres of grain and 60 acres of produce. The thing I love about farming compared to like any other job, you're never doing the same thing day after day. You know, one day you're plowing the field, the next day you're planting. You know, it's just always something different. Right now, they're focusing on their last melon planting for the season. We do consecutive plantings. We actually, we plant five different plantings at different times throughout the spring. And the reason we do that is because watermelons mature at different rates. So we wanna be able to pick watermelons you know, for an extended period of time. The most popular by far are the seedless watermelons, but how can you grow a crop that makes no seeds? Seedless watermelons are not genetically modified in any way. It's a process that's done through conventional plant breeding. A watermelon with two sets of chromosomes is crossbred with a watermelon that has four sets, causing the resulting seeds to only have three. The odd number of chromosomes means these plants can't reproduce, making them seedless. It's an expensive and complex process, which is why the maces buy their melons already sprouted. Plants come pre-grown from a local greenhouse because seedless watermelon seeds cannot germinate on their own in the field. You have to germinate the seed in a greenhouse with special growing conditions. When Carville receives the plants, they're about three inches tall and ready to go in the ground. The plastic mulch, it provides a bed for the plant so that the plant is actually a, like about three to four inches higher than the ground level which helps with disease pressure. And the plastic mulch is also very good for weed suppression. Not everything they're planting is seedless, though. While these two look identical, they're actually opposites. One person will be planting the seedless plants, and then the other person will be planting the seeded, what we call pollinator plants. The seeded male flower doesn't produce an edible melon. Its main purpose is to spread pollen. As the bees come along, they're gonna be flying around in here, and we just, we hope that they'll land on this flower and collect some pollen. And since the seedless watermelon plants have only female flowers, they count on their fellow neighbors for a little help. And then they'll fly over and look around on one of these flowers and transfer the pollen to the seedless flower, which will then produce a fruit. But for healthy watermelons to fully develop, they also need enough space to grow without competing with each other. The rows are eight feet apart and the plants are three feet apart in the row. Each plant has a good bit of space in order for it to grow because if you plant them too close together, the vines will tangle up with each other and they'll basically choke each other out. If the vines keep to themselves and the busy bees do their job, after 30 to 40 days, the maces will see little fruits develop on the flowers. They start out about the size of a marble right on the plant, and then within those 30 days, the fruit will grow to the size that you see when you go to the store to buy one. And in a few months, we'll be back in the field with Carvel to enjoy the fruits of his labor. It's very rewarding when you come out here in the summertime, this whole field, you won't even be able to see the plastic. It will just be a green mat of watermelon vines. And you walk through and you just see that great big fruit and it's just very satisfying. Hi, thanks for watching Maryland Farm and Harvest. If you like this story, leave us a comment. If you wanna see more, check out our playlists. We've got videos of cute animals, big machines, delicious farm-to-table recipes, and more.